Um, I want everyone to uh, log on, do whatever you do. Um, you're on Ebro in the morning. We have Laura Styles, we have Rosenberg, and uh, and a person I've known about for some time, but now we're finally sitting down and having a conversation. I bought the album. His name is Lecrae. He had the number one album in the country, I think, two weeks in a row. Yeah, is that yeah, right? What? Well, uh, three. Three weeks in a row. The so, album's called. Don't short this man. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Thank you. Sorry. Get it right. Uh, Lecrae is on the show. Give thank it up. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now you took like a overnight a red eye to get here for this interview. You're on tour right now. Yeah, on tour. Yeah, we just we just uh, sold out the Palladium and. Uh, I mean, came in here. I'm not. I'm not flexing. I'm just telling you. What I mean, well, you just should. Facts. <laughs> this is a flex zone. This yeah. is not a no flex zone. I think you should flex, flex though, because you were uh, when t told to me about you. It was like yo, Christian rapper, right? Oh, yeah. And the first thing I said was, well, "Is it good though?" Nah, but yeah. it's Christian. Yeah. And I'm like, "Yeah, but is it good?" Mm. Whether no matter what it's about, if it's whether I agree with it or disagree with it, and, and people we've had on this program, you don't necessarily agree with what they're talking about. But is it good music or not? And you make great music. So when I tell people about you, I'm always like, "Yo, you need to check out this Cat Lecrae. It's dope." Yeah. That's what's up. Um, but do you run into barriers because of that stigma? Oh, Talk man. about that. I'm more censored than the than the most drugged out, violent rapper you ever. I mean, they censor me more than anybody, man. It's like I'm marginalized, you know, put in a box. So it's kind of weird, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sitting here trying to put substance in music, and people are like, nah, nah, nah. So, you know, I feel. Do you that. think it's because you're a rapper talking about? Christianity and and all your music isn't just you know yeah. Bible thumb. It's about real life. It's about yeah. love. It's about you know relationships with your girl and right. it's all that. Do you think it's though like some people you know only respect reverence and things like that when it comes to talking about Christianity and they don't really want to hear from people unless you have that, yeah. um, I, you know those accolades to be able to talk about spirituality. Yeah, I think it's some of that. I think it's some of it is just a presupposition. Like they just assume I'm finna just tear off into a sermon. You know what I'm saying? So they're like, nah, 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 I'll take that off. You know what I mean? So in the same way, it's like when you, you if you're watching a, 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 a rated R movie with your grandma or something and the sex scene come on, you're like, ah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, 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 and so like, I think people feel like, I don't want to listen to it because if he says Jesus, I'm going to be like, ah. I was on my way to, you know, to the club. I was about to go roll a blunt. Not even a club. Said. Yeah, I was like, to the strip club or something. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, but did you grow up in a Christian household? I didn't. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nah, I didn't. I didn't. Um, I didn't really. I was really kind of just like that wasn't my thing. It was a. It was a. You know, I wasn't really into religion. My mother came out of a real strict religious home, so I really wasn't. She was like, be free, be think for yourself, and uh, and embrace. You know the world so I really got to find my own way yeah so uh, in finding your own way what I hear it in your music you talk about um, being a drug addict um I, I wasn't like an addict you know what I mean but I mean I dabbled you know what I mean I, I, I took a line or two to the head you know what I mean I snorted and I, you know that's but not like addict for real for real nah so what was the was there something that happened because you know you hear stories there was something that happened in someone's life that really um, push them in one direction sometimes it's down the wrong path and in yeah. your case you feel like you're on a righteous path on a spiritual path right. on a clean path what pushed you in that direction yeah for me it was more about um i'm not into religion i don't like following arbitrary rules for no reason so i really couldn't rock with that but the idea of a relationship with god was um you know intrigued me because i i, I had always grew up believing that you had to like earn God's favor and live perfectly and and Christianity was the only faith that said no it's not about you being perfect it's about you trusting in someone who already is perfect so for me I was just at wit's end you know what I'm saying I just was um I I had I think it all happened at like one time like I I had a life-threatening situation with a dude um I lost my job lost my girl my car flipped over on the highway got in a fight I got mm -hmm. split open I'm sitting in the hospital getting stitches I'm like telling my I'm, I'm like man I'm gonna go kill this dude and then I was like, I'm about to destroy my life right now. And that was kind of like the breaking point. Like, what am I about to do? You know what I mean? So I popped some pills, went to sleep, and hoped I didn't wake up. But I woke up, and it was like, all right, well, since I'm still here, let's investigate, you know, and go talk to these uh, to my friends who I knew were Christians. And, you know, the rest is history. Mm. Yeah. And now you're selling out shows, uh, album number one, three weeks in a row. Yeah. Um, talk about your music, though, because you're definitely something like when you listen to the music and the lyrics, like you say, you're not running around just Bible thumping and, and yeah. quoting scriptures. Like, right. do you get um, second guessed by people who think you're not Christian enough? 
and try to pass judgment on because it feels like listening to you talk about your Christianity and your right. relationship it feels like that leaves it open for other people to second guess that and, and maybe come at you for that yeah I mean that's I mean that's just I mean that's part of the whole deal is like you're not you're too Christian for the the world too too worldly for the church type of thing you know what I'm saying but um but for me I just I'm just real so I think real people relate to it you know what I mean so it's like I, I people who go through real life issues are like man I didn't expect anybody to talk about that you know what I mean and I'm and I and for me it's okay for me to talk like you know I, I was molested as a kid I don't care I talk about it because I'm I feel like I'm healed from it so it's no big deal and the church may be like whoa whoa don't 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 that's too much but for me I'm like why you know what I mean it's real it happened you know what I'm saying and I'm I'm over it I'm I've grown from it so why not? How much you talk about that experience in your music? Um, I, I I got a whole song where I like talk. I got a verse about it in the song called "Good, Bad, Ugly," where I just like talk about the good, the bad, the ugly things that I've experienced in life. Were you a ho homeless at one point? No, I was never homeless. Okay. Nah, just... Why you wanted to be homeless? <laughs> He's already went through a lot. He was molested for God's sake. <laughs> Might as well. I'm just kidding. Damn, son. Um, <laughs> who who molested you in your home? I was a female babysitter. Uh, you know, somebody really close and. Uh, you know, just it. You know, I just talk about the reality that I didn't really. You know, you know, I didn't tell nobody. It was kind of like, but it, even after I did, it was kind of like, oh well. You know, worse things have happened, and so keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? That's a very common thought about boys being molested by women. Yeah, right. Is that something that troubles you? Um, I mean, yeah, it does. I didn't really. It didn't really. I didn't think it phased me till I got older. Like I was wondering why I kept um, fondling girls in elementary school and whatnot. I was like, you know, something. You mean when you were also in elementary school? Yeah, yeah. yeah just yeah, make it just being clear. Yeah, I was like, man, I got this infatuation because my whole world was opened up. So it was like, oh, okay, you know what I mean? And it was just funny how that just became my new thing. And did 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 you get in trouble at all? Did little girls when you were in elementary school with like, yo, what's wrong with you? And then you were like, oh. nah. I mean, it was like a mutual. It was mutual yeah. fondling yeah. that you were enjoying. <laughs> God, you kind of See, animal I, are you? Really? Well, I was just about, I'm listening to you talk, and I'm like, damn. Well, I had this one baby when she was 13. I was eight, but I, mm. I want. I mean, but, but maybe, he, you don't. You don't ever see anything wrong with this. You were molested yeah. by a 13 year old babysitter. I mean, I had a babysitter, and I tried to get out her boobs, and she let me. Is Hold that on. molestation? Well, what you did you try to get? You were out, eight, yeah. literally. Mm -hmm. And what did she let you do? I mean, you know, I put a little booby in my mouth. At eight? Okay. Yeah, that was bad, right? Really bad. Yeah, really, really yeah. bad. Yeah. Absolutely, like, arrest-worthy juvenile hall. <laughs> You've got serious problems if you're letting... Babysitters should not do that. No, that's no. bad, right? That's bad. Yeah. See, Real at bad. the time, I didn't think it was bad, though. I thought it was tight. Well, I've, it, yeah. I, I mean... But when it was happening to you, you didn't think it was bad either, right? Nah, I know I did, because I, I, I was confused. I was more confused, but I was. it wasn't like I was trying to get out of it. It was like, hey, See, I was here. trying to get at yeah, the 13-year-old. Nah. I was, I was playing. Restaurant. I was playing with my Legos. I was like, you was, were little. Yeah, I was playing with Legos. I was like, huh? Oh, wait, what's happening right now? Yeah, that's not. Yeah, that's not yeah right. something's wrong with me. That's not okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a different. You should probably save that. See, these are cameras. You should save that for when you're in front of a therapist. You're confused. <laughs> you're getting confused. I right. understand. It's easy to get thrown. Off. I mean, I was just thinking about. It. I was like, wow. Well, maybe. <laughs> well, this is what Lecrae does. He helps people. He helps them understand. <laughs> now, <laughs> it is interesting though because. The, I am not a, a religious guy, yeah. nor am I particularly yeah, spirit. I'm spiritual or Jace. Yeah, but you're uh, Jewish, though. That's irrelevant. So? By, so are, by heritage, so you, right? Yeah, but I'm just saying. No, I mean, like, I'm Jewish by practice, too, but oh, okay. not not deeply. You know okay. what I'm saying? I go to the holidays because I enjoy the cultural part of Judaism. Sure, sure. But I'm not. I don't sit around and think about yeah. theology. Uh, or, or not even God that often, yeah. you know, particularly, unless I'm scared, which I think is what a lot of people do. But my point is this. I am also, though I'm semi-agnostic, yeah. I am not an atheist. I'm yeah. also not anti-religion. Right. And one thing that bothers me in particular is when people who are not religious yeah. make their lack of religion a religion. Oh yeah, come on. See, that's what I'm talking about. Like I, I don't, I can't. Like people like Bill Maher, yeah, I, I, like I can't stand yeah. when you villainize. Christians yeah. and uh, or, or or Muslims or whatever or sometimes Jews whatever it may be right. that part really bothers me and I find that there are some people who are so they think it's so crazy that a God could exist which mm -hmm. I understand right let's say we knew nothing we have an empty slate and someone goes hey there's this being that creates everything you could be like wow that sounds pretty crazy but at the same time you can't act as if you know anything on either side and you're yeah. better than the next man yeah. do you 
feel a frustration that in America the pendulum has swung so far that it's now kind of okay to bash religion uh, in America. I see Rosemary be waxing philosophical, boy. I mean no time. All right. About to talk about. Yo, God. Tell the, <laughs> tell the Christians I'm out you. <laughs> nah, I feel like that. I feel like um, in some ways it's like almost like Christianity is the new immorality to people. You know what I'm saying? Or or, or religion is the new immorality or whatnot. Like, like you, everyone thinks you're this intolerant bigot who hates everybody. It's anti-gay. Yeah, just uh, like. Uh, uh, Anti-pro-choice. Right. Anti-everything the second you say that you're religious. Right. And and my thing is like, for me, I'm like, well, I, I guess if I take it all the way back to, to my, like, because I kind of was, I was pretty much agnostic. I'm atheist initially, but my whole thing is like, why am I feeding myself in the morning? Why do I get up and get dressed? Like, I'm living like my life matters, but if I'm just the product of a cosmic explosion, then who cares? Why don't I, so let's act consistent with the thought. Let's beat Thelma and Louise and go rob banks and and do whatever we want to do if if nothing matters. But no one ever does that, so I don't. You're you know. saying that non-religious people still follow the general rules of being a good person yeah. in society. Yeah. So obviously, this morale comes yeah. from somewhere. Somewhere, you know what I mean? Like, where where why have morale anyway? What's the point? Like, we just we just it's we're random selection. I mean, we're survival of the fittest, right? So let's take it all the way out to the fullest. Do you think it would be easier and you would get less ridicule being um, a, a chief keef or, or, you know, an artist that's certainly much more controversial for a variety of reasons, usually being more violent? And, uh, and Well, let's not act like chief keef doesn't get ridicule. He does. He, get, does. he does get ridicule. But I wonder why he, he get them spins, though. He, but he doesn't care. <laughs> well, but he's right, though. But he is also, but, you know, all due respect, until yeah. he got, until this guy became number one in the country, there was no question that chief keef was hotter than Lecrae. For sure, he's been scorching, and but and now, that's and that's and that's an but, interesting thing. But yeah. on the music side of things, right? Lecrae's views, YouTube views, album sales, all of that stuff started to pick up exponentially over the last two years, right? With his touring yeah. and everything. Chief Keef came out. Look, I don't. I'm not even a fan. Yeah. But just on the metrics and the measurement of things, right? Chief Keef had millions because of what was in the video, and people love to look at negative things. That's just right. how socially we're wired. Or imagery that scares them or, and provokes right, them. Whatever it is. His imagery was something where people were like, oh my gosh, look at this yeah. imagery, which propelled him to be something that people talked about. Yeah. Look, unfortunately, and we talk about this all the time, negativity is what attracts people for yeah. some odd reason more than positivity initially. Uh -huh. And then there's always a pushback, right? Um, I believe right now we're seeing a pushback. There's reality shows and all this negative TV. It's not as hot as it was. And you have somebody now like Lecrae who has floated up to the top and become something that is not only selling but selling out shows. Uh -huh. Music is getting played on the radio and it's picking up and what he's doing. And he, he, he earned it because of his music, though. Right. Yeah. It wasn't like Lecrae didn't earn his skill and work on his craft just like any other musician. He just happens to be positive. It's, it's, it's interesting. You sort of remind me of, I don't know if other people say this, is it reminds me of Macklemore. Um, okay, I can see that. The Bill. You yeah. guys have been in the game yeah. almost the same amount of time yeah. and then exploded sort of at similar points yeah. in your career. If they did a song together, Ooh. the world might explode. <laughs> <laughs> Big Bang Theory? That would be. I'm not trying to get religious. Oh, I'm sorry. just saying it could be a moment. <laughs> Do you ever get like younger fans come up to you and um, because of your music just make it you like you've made it cool or okay to yeah. explore religion or oh, yeah. send a more positive all message? Day. All day, like all day. I mean, and like everybody is not like super pious. Like some people are just like, man, I'm just working on it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I'm just, but I appreciate your music because it it like it it gives me some lanes. You know, to like it's like at least an aspiration. You know right. what I'm saying? So. Uh, I want to be as transparent as you are, but I'm not there yet. You know what I mean? So I don't get like, you know, I do get some super pious like grandmas and whatnot. But I, but I also get just like, you know, the ratchet like, y'all, man, look, man, I'm out here. But what you doing? I appreciate it. You know what I mean? So yeah. I wanted to get on a record too, which um sets a tone too. Um, it's called "Welcome to America" on your album. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite songs on your album. Um, because it surprised me that it was on the album. Mm. Right. Um, I didn't expect when I bought your album to get um, political social as uh -huh. well. Right. Uh -huh. um, so I want to play that. Then I want to just come back and talk about just your, your new music, your video and all that. And your stuff. movie. Yeah. Got yeah. A movie coming out. Right. Too. Yeah. It's yeah. called Welcome to America. You got Lecrae, Ebro in the morning, Hot 9-7. Uh, I was made in America, land of the free, home of the brave. 
And right up under your nose You might see a sex slave being traded And would do anything for the money Boy, mama might sell her babies Sell porn, sell pills, anything to pay the bills Anything to bring that paper Gotta scratch that itch, gotta scratch them ticks Ain't rich, but I might be And I'ma shoot these flicks, I'ma turn these tricks Anything for a slight fee Yeah, made in America Mama told me that I belong here Had to earn our stripes, had to learn our rights Had to fight for a home here Lecrae, Ebro in the morning Um, I, You talking about being a veteran in that yeah. record a lot Yeah Um, wh Where did you... What I, service were you in? And I wasn't you actually. So for me, it's, it, I was more speaking from the perspective of like friends and family. Got you it. know, as far as far as the veterans concerned. So in my mind, I, I'm, I, you know, um, I got a lot of friends in Chicago, and I remember just standing on the street corners in Chicago, and and you know, they out there, you know, selling drugs and whatnot. And then I got family members who who have fought and and taken bullets for this country, and um. And they both American, you know what I'm saying? And some people don't want to look at America like when when you go outside and look on the corner in East New York, that's America, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? They try to sweep it under the rug, yeah. act like it's not there. Yeah. So you know, I just wanted to paint the picture for everybody um, of all the different pers perspectives of what America is. Talk to us about your movie. Yeah. So the movie I'm in is it's called Believe Me. Um, you know, in select. It's the Lil Wayne and Drake story. Um, yeah. It's really exciting. It's nice. nice. As narrated by, as seen by Lecrae. As seen by Lecrae. Believe yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Nah, but it's um, it's really just kind of like it's. I, I got involved with it because it's an independent film, mm -hmm. and um, and like done by by you know people who doing it independently, like myself. So, you know, as an independent artist, I just like getting behind stuff like that. And I also like it because it um, it's not a religious film, but it does like. It does touch on some things and like touch on the presuppositions that people have about faith and um and Christianity. You know, got Nick Offerman in there from Parks and Rec and uh Alex Russell from Chronicle and my man Sinqua Walls who's uh doing fifties power right now. So it's a it's a good it's a dope film just to just, you know, look at you know, kinda look at how people view faith, but it's not like a, a Christian film. Do you find that um your perspectives on religion have you know, because I, you know, I don't take, I was raised in, uh, went to Hebrew school and I went to Pentecostal church when I was growing up. So I, was, mm. I saw both sides of kind of in a very like uh, multicultural atmosphere, right? That's yeah. how I grew up. Um, and so it, it helped me see things from people's different perspectives. But one thing that I found for religion is that sometimes people are afraid to broaden their view without like for instance just the other day the pope and the you know the catholic church saying you know that their acceptance of gays mm -hmm. right which is, was a big deal the pope coming out in the language that they use that you know gay people and and their family and loved ones need to be respected the same way as anyone else mm -hmm. do you find that you're helping people broaden their religious perspectives and feel okay with that because i know that sometimes as you guys were discussing earlier um, it's sometimes my issue is that, you know, we'll talk about God as this omnipresent, omnipotent thing, but mm -hmm. then also in the same breath, talk about all of the things that God is not instead mm -hmm. of accept, you know what I mean? Yeah. Accepting everybody's religion for negative. Right. A lot yeah. of people, which a lot of people do. There are people who do that. Yeah. I think we have this perspective that, um, I mean, but I think it's because like even the term religion just, it's almost like. It feels like shackles, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think that's just the way people see it. It's like, hey, man, shackled, be stifled, like, you know, uh, oppressed. And I, that's not how I look at it. Um, so, yeah, I do I do feel like people's, you know, horizons get broad and listening to the music because they, they, they come into contact. With, a lot of times I'm like an alien. So people are like, yo, man, you, you're a Christian? Like, what are you... What don't you do? What do you do? You know, they're like poking at me to see if I'm going to... An experiment. Yeah, do the tricks that they think I'm going to do. And um, and and then they get around me and they're like, oh, okay, well, wow. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't know. Well, you've, well here's, it, it's only because you're a Christian and a rapper. Okay. I know mad Christians. No okay. one's like, oh yeah. my God, are you out? What are you doing? <laughs> like... You like girls? Well, you because like hip hop is synonymous with so many negative streets, drugs, and then clubs, when you go Christian, clubs, we, we assume it's DC talk, and it's like mm -hmm. no disrespect, but like really Christian rap, and that's all it is. Kurt Franklin, it's like, song. yeah. I mean, yeah. you mentioned shackles. Take the shackles off your feet so you can dance. Talk about you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you understand it. what I'm talking about? Now, I think another thing that's interesting about religion is that's hard to say is that what you were talking about people using religion religion negatively is like. People don't want to identify that in all of our books, mm -hmm. eh, there's some crazy shit in there We pr I don't follow along with in my own book. There's right, some. Right, right. If I could read the Torah, 
completely. I'm sure I'd be like, nope. I'm gonna X this part. <laughs> no, I would X no, this no, part no, out. No. I would X this part. I like this. You know what I'm saying? I think so. It's uh, frustrating when we see people who love religion. Um, not make themselves better people because of it, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But they just live by the book. So yeah, strictly. I read everything in context. You know what I'm saying? Like that, it, what what was then may not be what for what's like tattoos. You know, people like, oh, you can't have. I saw in the Bible, but I'm like, you know, that was a that was like thousands of years ago. A different culture. They did it for different reasons. Like maybe they would have got an infection because they were using bones, and guys like y'all need to chill out. You know what I'm saying? Like or they were worshiping dead people or something. You know what I'm saying? Like so it's just a whole different perspective for me like i just try to look at everything in context it's funny we have ended up talking about religion a lot though we just talked about how why are you making a big thing of his religion oh yeah we've been right. damn, it's been damn like theological mm -hmm. school i mean i yeah. tried to stay off of it was you blaming me yep blame the jew mm -hmm. oh always that's separate. how we do it always separate. always blame the jew i know it's always back to us man. what are we gonna do i mean listen man do you blame yourself being half christian half jewish Nah, I just me and Jesus. You know what I'm saying? I know he's Jewish. They blamed him. You know what I'm it saying? saying? It was beef. He's Jewish. You're you know what I mean? Go. Christians still got beef with the Jews, even though the dude they're supposed to follow is actually Jewish in the first place. Talk it's about so it. Confused. It's so crazy. Where, are, are you playing any shows here anytime soon? Um, I'm gonna be like 30 minutes outside of New York, and um, I think it's Montclair. Yeah. yeah. Yo, listen, Montclair, New Jersey has a, it's a lovely community town. there. It's a lovely town, but yeah. they have a community there and a performance venue that embraces a lot of hip-hop. Uh, and so yeah, when you yeah. get in that venue in there, it's a, they, a lot of hip-hop comes through that venue. Have you had any problems with um, Master Ace's old artist, Lachey? Stop it. Now we're getting... Now what about LaShawn? What about LaShawn? No, stop, man. Stop. Right. You're acting crazy. I had no problem. Look, right, you got your bars ready, my Jesus? Get to this hip-hop, man. Happening. What beat you got <laughs> cast one? Uh-huh. Uh, That's something you can handle that? Yeah. All right, it's on you, man. Check. Lecrae, Ebro in the morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, yeah. Bar Snap. Yeah. Hey, look, I'm from an era of fast living in mass terror. Boys covered in cover, girls like mascara. And I don't need to keep a gun in the mask ever. I still make them put their hands up. Ask Derek, my road manager, damage all of you amateurs sneaking up on my tour bus with a demo to handle us. When I was younger, I just wanted a chain. Now a chain of events has afforded a change. Yeah, uh, I freestyle on the morning show. Hot 97, Ebro, yeah, and Rosen, bro. You know it's on Lara Styles, that's the way to go. She got an iPhone out on me, yo. How you doing? Uh, I flip scripts and I'm in this and I'm in the mix. New York City, Montclair about to see me get them ticks. Yeah, they gone line doing fine. Number one album, but I ain't trying to shine. Uh, I'm trying to rhyme. I'm trying to do my thing, but they put me in a box. Yeah, put me in that ring and let, let's take the gloves off. The beat stop, but it's all good. I keep rapping. I'm all hood and I rap this because I'm all uh. Yeah, it's, it's really nothing to me. Give me the microphone, yeah. I'm not into me. Lecrae, man, give it up for him on the show. Yo, his latest single right now, All I Need Is You. Let's get into it, man.